good morning from Kyoto, where it is disgustingly 5.30 in the morning. And I have to get up because we are leaving Kyoto now. We're going into the mountains. We're going to meet Chris and Sonia from the Chateau de la Motfeuille. They're already there and they're going to collect us at the station when we arrive. And apparently we're not going straight to the hotel. We are going to try and find some monkeys, which does actually sound worth getting up for. Well, I didn't manage to film any of the getting ready this morning because we were running around like headless chickens as usual. Thanks for the tea though. I don't think I'd have made it without that. Yeah, headless that's chicken. how I feel. We've run out of the house so quickly that I'm just convinced that halfway to the monkeys, I'm gonna realize I've left something behind. I've got that sinking sensation. But as long as I've got my passport, yes. all good. What an absolutely stunning city. I'm very sad to leave. Only the thought of monkeys is making this possible. We are traveling super light. I only had a little duffel bag with this, but Michael had a huge suitcase. And Sonia and Chris contacted to tell us that they've discovered it in Japan. You can send your luggage on ahead. So we have sent our luggage to the next hotel. It cost us about 10 euros each and we can travel super light. That's amazing. We are taking the Thunderbird. That sounds pretty stylish. Thunderbirds are go. It's all a bit too early to be go. <laughs> Thunderbirds are. Yeah, Thunderbirds are ambling. <laughs> We're a bit disappointed that this is not our train. You do actually look a little bit like a manga. Uh, this looks like a great round on the manga train. Oh well. When you're traveling in Japan, one of the most important things to remember is that trains are neither late nor early. So if you're at the platform and you see a train that's 10 minutes before it's supposed to be there, it's not your train. It's a little bit early for you. <laughs> right, Thunderbirds are go. We're in the very first two seats on the entire train, 1A and 1B, and we have set up our editing suites. Oh, this is the way to travel, like this. We're just changing onto our final train of the day. Well, we are going in grand class. This sounds very swank. Very grand, indeed. <laughs> it's strange, you open it just by touching. Good grief. Wow. We'd heard about these amazing train carriages in Japan, so we thought we would try it for one. Where is Michael? I thought I'd love to turn around you weren't back. <laughs> okay, these are our seats here. I mean, it seems almost like overkill. I'm basically lying down. They've just given us a menu. We've chosen Japanese fare and lemon pound cake. Tea is on its way. Oh. This is not where you get on British Rail. <laughs> <laughs> in Nagano and now we're gonna go and find Sonia and Chris who have rented a car. We have arrived at the snow monkey park now. They're called snow monkeys because they live in the snow throughout the winter but it's April now so we weren't expecting to see any snow at all. Actually there is still quite a bit of snow melting around us. It's been quite a cold year. So much more snow than we thought there would be. So I'm not really dressed for the mountains but Never mind, nothing a cashmere jumper can't fix. We have met up with Sonia and Chris. Very good to see you. You see, you are dressed appropriately. Yes. The problem with traveling light is that I had to make tough decisions on not bringing a ton of winter clothes for one morning in the mountains. Chris and Michael haven't said one word about snow monkeys yet. I think it's just been Formula One the entire way up the mountain. Well, we're definitely going right because we want to see the hot springs for the monkeys and not for the humans. We can definitely smell our approach to the hot springs because there's a very sulfurous smell in the air. Sonia wins. Yes. Yes. Sonia has spotted the first monkey. <laughs> there's the natural geyser, which is quite unusual because instead of emitting plumes of steam every now and then, this is a continuous geyser. That steam's coming out at 90 degrees centigrade. And it's this geothermal activity that is used to create the hot springs. This is the historic inn that was created in 1864 for hot springs for humans. And it's because the monkeys kept trying to use the hot springs for the humans that the park officials decided to create hot springs for the monkeys just to dissuade them from coming to the human ones. 
And actually, since then, the monkeys have developed their own bathing culture, and they now regularly come to their own hot springs. Some pretty lucky monkeys, I think. Don't do it, Michael. Don't even think about it. I think it's a bit like our banisters at uh, La Lanne. Ah, uh, yes. I think I see now why you're not allowed to touch it. I was absolutely not yeah, expecting that. to see a monkey in the snow in April. Oh, but he's so fluffy to keep nice and warm. What a fur coat. Oh, there, darling, that is a big huddle. They must just huddle for warmth. These snow monkeys manage to get through the harsh winters here by eating so much when food is abundant in the autumn that they can get through the winter, which they tend to spend huddling up for warmth. We're going full apres ski atmosphere in here. Just slightly different food wise to France. And this is the local ramen. Is it good? It's really, really good. That was delicious. And I had it with a hot ginger tea as well. So I have been thoroughly warmed on the inside. And now we're going to go to our hotel, which I'm quite excited about. It's near a really beautiful ancient castle, actually the oldest wooden castle in Japan, which we will be visiting tomorrow. Chris has accidentally rented what is clearly the largest car in the entirety of Japan. We are traveling in proper style. Feels as though we're getting very remote now. Yeah. Quite marvelous. It's good to see welcoming lights up ahead. <laughs> you have arrived at the destination. We have walked into total tranquility. Our shoes have been removed. I mean, do you like my bee socks? Pretty good. There's a fire in the corner of the room. Jazz in the background. It's like a tea station over there. Those beautiful paper screens. And it's so vintage. I feel as though I've walked into a Japanese house in the 1940s. Though to be fair, I have absolutely no idea what Japanese houses look like in the 1940s. As soon as we've walked in, we've been put in fluffy chairs, given green tea and something that looks a little bit like... Seaweed. That's not what I was going to say. Michael says seaweed. I think it looks a bit like chard. Now, we've just been told that before dinner, if we come through here, we can have a complimentary drink. Oh, it's like an enchanted forest. Well, this is absolutely delightful. Now, that is the way to serve a sake, isn't it? Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for driving us here so majestically. It was very, very good. Yeah, and it's brave, isn't it, to suddenly drive in another country with Japanese road signs. And and all the big sort of fashion signs that presumably meant danger, danger, <laughs> were all in Japanese. And, and there's lots of very big falls down and windy roads. And so we weren't aware of the danger. Exactly. It was very off. peaceful. Yes. <laughs> this is one of our rooms. There's a bath. I think it might already have water in it. And this is amazing. I feel as though I've gone back in time. I love this. Is it full? <gasps> okay, let's go and look at the other room. And we're going to quickly change into kimonos because we're having Japanese dinner tonight. Next one's down here. This might be mine. This is the other room. But you have an outdoor 
onsen. Oh yes! This is very cool. Well, for goodness, that's what I'm doing. Quickly change into kimono. I keep this. Uh, yeah, you keep the sake. Uh, you can finish that. And see you in a sec. Yeah. The meal is starting with a wild mountain asparagus soup with ginseng and chicken broth. Wild mountain asparagus. Really good. I can't believe it. The sherry blossoms. so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> We're just grinning. <laughs> All edible wild plants. There's Arui, Kugomi, Mitsuba, Taranomi and Nibiru, all of which I will be discovering for the first time tonight. This looks just like the top of a fern. <laughs> it's quite delicious. The next course is a clam dumpling in broth. We are doing a sake pairing. So with each of the different courses, we're trying a different sake. And this one is mildly warm and apparently has a banana flavour. So if you've got your clam dumpling and you're wondering what to have with it, it's a a sake with a hint of natural banana. Really? You're picking up on it? Our next course is a sashimi plate with salmon, flounder and sardines. And these are soybeans and soy sauce and ginger. I am really glad that we ordered the sake tasting just because the presentation is so wonderful. This sake is white because it's unfiltered. So it's it's really the rice there that we're seeing. So different. It's, it's real. Now the next one is a zaza, which is an udon noodle, but it's a local udon noodle. Instead yes. of salt, they use a local bean yeast. And this is with wasabi, and apparently underneath there is wasabi leaf. And I don't think I've ever seen a wasabi leaf in my life, so let's have a look for it. You look like leaves. There we go. That is the wasabi leaf. Wasabi is, of course, a type of Japanese horseradish. Fantastic. I think we should grow, try and grow wasabi. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes. The next sake comes in a wonderful bottle and it's an aromatic rice sake served in much smaller quantities, very, very flavorful. And it comes with simmered bamboo sprout and wakame seaweed. This is a warm sake served in a wooden cup, which apparently imparts a wooden flavor and makes it a little bit like roasted meat, so it goes well with meat. And the sake is made by firemen as their hobby. And here we have two different types of beef. This is a rolled sirloin with wild vegetables inside. And this is a fillet steak. Our final course before dessert is rice and miso. And that looks good. Mm -hmm. Look at the sticks. Oh, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. They look like Harry Potter wands. It's true. <laughs> it's so true. Dessert is strawberries and gin. Why don't we put our strawberries and gin at home? Yeah, and <laughs> cherry blossom ice cream and red bean paste all had surrounded by fairy lights in the salon it's been a magical evening amazing absolutely wonderful that was simultaneously one of the most delicious and one of the most beautiful meals that i've had and now i am going to relax in the spa bath i've lit the candle and i can choose one of these bags of herbs to put in and this is lavender, as I'm about to go to sleep. I think this one will be absolutely perfect. And as there are matches here, I can finally light one of the cherry blossom incense sticks that I bought in Kyoto. And whilst I relax in the bath, I'll show you that they had a bit of a different evening at La Land. How do you feel about Philip cooking tonight? I do feel like... What do you feel? Well, I feel that you might feel that you're a bit in over your head. <gasps> wow, that's presumptuous, eh? Yeah. I mean, that's what I thought. I know, it's not necessarily right, I just, Ooh. that's what I'm What's going on here? In over my head, apparently. Lovely. You, that smells delicious. Just leaks. Wow. And, and what's going on here? I'm making a shallot rice. Wonderful. I mean, eat. In, in over my head, so. <laughs> I'll just sit here and be quiet now. <laughs> He's happy. He's had his dinner, so he doesn't have to worry about star starving. <laughs> well, it's not 10 yet, so I feel young tonight, you know, having late dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Someone is very happy tonight. Someone is happy that I'm cooking. Yes. At least one person. <laughs>
Wow, this sad music is uh, really giving. Calming. <laughs> this kitchen needed with all the off-hand remarks. Oh. Oh. You, you didn't have with the salmon, and that's much nicer than I would have done. Mm, looks delicious, doesn't it? The salmon looks particularly yeah. delicious, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and so does the veg, to be fair. Thank you. It looks healthy. And now you're um, adding the rest of the sauce on there. That's yes. quite clever, isn't it? But I hate that scraping sound. Do you have to do that? <laughs> can wait, you, wait, wait, wait. Can, can, you, can you use this? Oh, okay, great. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Much better. I'm not mean. I'm honest. Actually, that is true. That, that, that does, you know, I'm not, one does learn. Yeah. It, yeah. Oh, well. Then we'll I'll show you how to lay a table. Oh, and wow. Oh. She said it was actually very good earlier. You know, it comes to a point where you're just so hungry, you don't care anymore. <laughs> Dinner turned out pretty good. And we're all watching a movie. Cheers. 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 I'll say good night to you all, and until we meet tomorrow to discover Japan's oldest wooden castle, I'll just say, Adamant. <laughs>